So, welcome. Uh, welcome to my talk, a quick introduction to AWS uh, Kinesis Streams. Um, I will uh, give you a high-level overview and then um, show you a little demo. Um, Kinesis. Kinesis is part of the so-called Kinesis platform family. Um, there are three members in this family. Um, the first one is uh, Kinesis Streams. This is an original Kinesis. Before there was a, a family, the family is rather new. So um, this is available since uh, last year. Uh, a new member of the family, Kinesis Firehose, was uh, just announced and is available since uh, October of this year. And uh, there's also an announcement for a third member of the family, the analytics. In this talk, I will focus on Kinesis Streams, uh, which um, is a kind of, think about this as a managed um, uh, Kafka cluster. Um, it's not really Kafka, it's a um, proprietary build system from um, Amazon itself, um, but it's very similar from the, um, from the point of view of the high-level uh, concepts. Okay, what do you use uh, this kind of software for um, uh, to, uh, to implement what kind of uh, use cases? Um, for example, you have um, a web server, a clickstream source. Um, you need to collect a lot of um, uh, events, data events, records in the, in the Apache log file. And uh, you need to store this uh, somewhere before you start to analyze it and then to present uh, um, uh, personalized um, uh, suggest, uh, suggestions out of these um, analysis, but um, all similar use cases can uh, use um, uh, Kinesis. So the overall high-level architecture is um, that you have um, an EC2 instance or a client application or a mobile application. Um, uh, all these kinds of um, sources can uh, write into um, uh, the um, uh, Kinesis stream. Uh, this uh, stream is uh, subdivided into so-called shards. The shards partition the data. And then, on the other hand, you have consumers which uh, read from this um, stream, read from these shards, and um, um, process um, the, um, the uh, records inside of the shard. So, let's get into the details, uh, into the concept a little bit more detailed. Um, the stream stream is a named event of data records. Um, the uh, data record is usually stored for up to 24 hours, but you can increase this retention time up to seven days. And um, the data inside of the stream is partitioned. Um, the data record is a unit of data stored inside of um, the stream. And a uh, data record contains of uh, three parts. Um, the data blob, this is binary blob. You can put anything you want into it. Um, a partition key and a sequence number. So what is a, a partition key? A partition key is assigned to the data record um, uh, by the data producer, so by your application. And it's used for uh, partitioning the data across shards. Um, how does it work? It's um, um, defined an MD5 hash. This is calculated by uh, Kinesis, and then this determines um, the, uh, the shard um, the data record um, goes into. A sequence number is assigned by um, uh, Kinesis on write. So um, if you need your business uh, application uh, level um, um, identifier, you can put this into the uh, binary blob. Um, but um, in addition to this, um, Kinesis also creates a um, uh, unique, unique identifier for every data record you write into the stream. Um, the shard mentioned before is a group of data records inside um, the stream. Um, its um, stream is composed of multiple charts. It's um, partitioning the, the stream. And um, you scale um, the stream by adding or removing charts. 
What does it mean? It means each shard is not only a logical construct, but also um, a unit of capacity. Um, so if you are, do not have enough uh, capacity, read or write, you um, increase the number of shards inside the stream. And uh, one um, shard um, is, uh, ingests, is able to ingest um, uh, what up to one megabyte per second of data, um, divided in up to 1,000 uh, 1, records um, per second. On the read side, you get for every um, shard, two megabyte of um, second, uh, two megabyte per second um, of um, egress uh, traffic. So you can read double the uh, amount um, uh, of uh, data volume um, as you can uh, write. So a little demo, because I think this would make um, things more clear. Hmm? That's a problem. Let's start this again. Okay. So, um, to... Um, thank you. Um, to um, help me pr uh, to um, execute this uh, demo, I've prepared some uh, small uh, shell scripts which guide me through this um, demo. So, um, first step is to list available streams, and as expected, it's empty. Um, you see um, I'm using the AWS command line tool uh, for this, but of course there are multiple options, um, APIs, higher level APIs and so on. Um, uh, but this shows uh, the command line uh, tool has the ability to show the actual data on the HTTP level. So this is a JSON um, encoded um, data. And like you see, um, this JSON array is empty, so there are no streams um, available. And um, so we create a stream. Um, the stream gets a name, this kind, in this case, uh, DevOps, and a number of shards. And I can increase or decrease the number of shards um, uh, afterwards, but at the beginning I need to decide what should be the initial capacity. So, um, I can then, um, sorry? Could you make font bigger? Okay, uh, sorry for this. I think this okay? Thank you. And um, what you then can, um, um, uh, test is um, to describe the details about uh, a, a stream and you can see um, that it's um, already active. The stream name is DevOx, um, like um, we ordered it. And um, one chart with um, an average chart itself gets a chart ID inside of the stream. And um, you can see this hash key. And uh, as explained before, if the hash key of your partition key um, uh, determines uh, the shard, so uh, we have only one, uh, one uh, shard, so this goes from zero to um, the maximum um, um, hashing, hash value. So um, all um, partition keys um, uh, goes into this only one shard. And um, what you also can see, it's uh, the starting sequence number. So this would be the sequence number, the first data record um, will be uh, signed. And um, as you can see, this is not starting with one or zero, but it's a very big uh, number and it's not uh, consecutive, consecutive um, but it's increasing. So then let's put some data into this um, stream. And um, of course, you can put much bigger sizes. I think it's one megabyte or something um, um, for, this, uh, for um, the binary blob. In this case, I just put the string hello um, and uh, the current time. 
and um, let's um, put a second data record inside of this hello devox kinesis. So we have um, now uh, put three uh, data records into um, our stream and um, the response is always um, the shard where the uh, record is put into and the sequence number. And you can see the sequence number is, has increased, but it's not 86, 87, 88, but there are some gaps in, uh, between them. Um, now let's get the data back. <coughs> and to uh, get the data, data uh, back, we need to um, uh, have one um, uh, step to do, which is to um, um, get an iterator. An iterator is like a cursor, um, and it's, uh, but it's temporary. So it's only um, uh, its, its lifetime is uh, limited to five minutes. So you need to always um, get new iterators, and you can see um, the, how this works um, if I proceed. Because I need this iterator, I will uh, save it in a temp file and um, then um, get um, the data um, based on this um, currently uh, saved iterator. And it, as you can see, I uh, have now um, uh, read, uh, read from the, from the um, stream three data records. And um, as you can see, the data is a little bit cryptic because the um, uh, the data is base64 encoded, and um, the library, um, uh, the API library, will uh, do it uh, for you. But in this case, I uh, need to decode this. Um, and if I put this here, then you can see um, this is my original um, data record. Um, if I and what you also can see is that I always receive um, uh, the next shard iterator. So if I now put this into my temp file and I um, get data again, then I start at this position and the response is, an empty record set because after this last iterator, I have not put new um, uh, data records into the uh, into the stream. Last step would be to delete the stream, and um, then you can see that now the status is deleting, and after a little bit um, of time, one or two minutes, then um, the stream is gone. Okay. So, some closing remarks. If you want to use um, Kinesis streams, understand the consequences of the limits. The shards is a unit of capacity. This means there's uh, dependencies between the number of shards, the number of consumers, the latency for every uh, consumer, and um, you need uh, to calculate and to balance um, um, depending on your use case. Um, and also decide if um, Kinesis is the right tool for you. Um, you have a, a trade-off, um, you have a vendor login because this is proprietary um, uh, cloud service, um, uh, and, uh, but it's managed, it's completely managed. An alternative would be to um, uh, host and operate and manage your own Kafka cluster, uh, cluster. but um, um, if you have done this in production to manage uh, your own Kafka cluster, this is a lot of work. So this is an easy, scalable, 24-7, always on uh, service, um, but um, you um, need to get uh, to, to keep this in your back of your mind. It's a vendor login. 
And um, uh, the last point is choose the right access library. I've used a command line. This is just for demonstration purposes. Um, there are different levels of clients. Um, you have uh, the direct APIs, low level. You have higher level APIs, which um, uh, supports um, uh, multi-thread uh, reading, um, uh, coordination in a distributed um, uh, cluster scenario, and um, uh, multiple third-party connectors, for example, to, to Hadoop or to um, um, ACA streams and um, uh, stuff like this. OK, I'm done. Thank you. And if you have any questions, I will be here.